untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a red white dragon deck titled Dragon Master, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring a ton of the new cards from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, and one of those is Grand Master of Flowers, the new 4 mana planeswalker that starts out at 3 loyalty and has two different plus 1 abilities that are both great at protecting him. The first says target creature without first strike, double strike, or vigilance cannot attack or block until our next turn. The second plus 1 lets a search or library under a graveyard for a card named Monk of the Open Hand, reveal it and put it into our hand. And Monk over the open hand say 1 mana, 1-1 one, one elf monk, saying whenever we cast our second spell each turn put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. And then we don't have an ultimate ability on the Grandmaster, but as long as the Grandmaster has 7 or more loyalty counters on him, he's a 7-7 seven, seven dragon god creature with flying and indestructible. So it turns into a very powerful and difficult to deal with win condition. And once he turns into a 7-7 seven, seven dragon, the opponent will no longer be able to attack him to decrease its loyalty, but in our turn we can still use the various plus 1 abilities, so we get to have the best of both worlds. Then to synergize with our Grandmaster, we also have the full playset of Mila, Crafty Companion, slash Luka, Wayward Bonder. Mila's a 2-3 legendary creature fox, saying whenever an opponent attacks one or more planeswalkers we control, put a loyalty counter on each planeswalker we control. And then whenever a permanent we control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, we may draw a card. And then we can also potentially play Luka, Wayward Bonder for 6 mana, a 5 loyalty planeswalker that has a plus 1, letting us discard a card, and if we do we get to draw a card, but if a creature was discarded this way we get to draw 2 cards instead. So that's already very synergistic with our Grandmaster, as we can easily discard a copy of Monk of the Open Hand to draw 2, and that's a very nice card draw engine. And then the minus 2 lets us return a creature from our graveyard to the battlefield that we have to exile at the beginning of our next upkeep, also gains haste, so very strong with some of our bigger dragons in the deck. And then the minus 7 gives us an emblem, saying whenever a creature enters a battlefield under our control it deals damage equal to its power to any target. So another very powerful ability. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, at 1 mana we've got 3 copies of Monk of the Open Hand to go with our Grandmaster. We don't want to naturally draw the Monk, but we do still want to have a few copies left in the deck to search up, so I think 3 is the sweet spot for the Monk. Then we've got the full place of the Frostbite to deal 2 damage to a creature or planeswalker, unless we have 3 or more snow permanents, in which case we deal 3 damage instead, and we've got 18 snow covered basics to go with it. Then at 2 mana, a new addition is Loyal Warhounds, a 3 1 dog with vigilance that when it enters a battlefield, if an opponent controls more lands than us, we get to search our library for a basic planes card and put it on the battlefield tapped. So if we have to run it out on turn 2 it's still fine, but especially for on the draw we can easily wait a turn to play the Warhound and then get that extra value and ramp with our basic planes. Then we've got the full playset of a Dragon's Fire, which can deal 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker unless we reveal a dragon card from our hand or control a dragon in play, in which case we can potentially deal more damage equal to its power. And then we've got two copies of Rip Apart, which can deal 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker or destroy an artifact or enchantment. Then at 3 mana besides Mila, we also have 3 copies of Sparring Regimen, an enchantment that when it enters the battlefield lets us learn, so we can grab one of our 7 sideboard cards in best of 1, including Academic Probation, Environmental Sciences, Reduce to Mastery, Start from Scratch, Spirit Summoning, Introduction to Prophecy, and finally Mascot Exhibition, so all these lessons we can learn for. And then whenever a creature we control attacks, we can put a plus one plus one counter on it and then untap it as well. So this is especially nice with our adult gold dragon, a 5 mana 4-3 dragon with flying, a lifelink and haste. So we can attack with it right away and once we start putting even more counters on it with our sparring regimen, it can easily get out of hand and gain us a ton of life, making it almost impossible to race. And then finally we have a one-off copy of Icing Death, Frost Tyrant, a 4-3 legendary dragon with flying and vigilance, and when Icing Death dies we get to make Icing Death, Frost Tongue, a legendary white equipment artifact token that gives the equipped creature plus 2 power and whenever the equipped creature attacks, tap target creature defending player controls and equips for 2 mana. And then a one-off copy of Inferno of the Star Mounts, a 6 mana 6-6 six, six legendary dragon with flying and haste, cannot be countered and has fire breathing, and if it somehow gets to 20 power it deals 20 damage to any target. And then our mana base has 26 lands in it, including two copies of Cave of the Frost Dragon, which can turn into a 3-4 dragon with flying. 
got our snow covered basics to go with our frostbite, two of the red white snarl, and four copies of the red white pathway. So this deck is legal in standard 2022, since all cards are rotation proof, so that's the format we'll be playing today. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a decent hand, assuming we can hit our land drops. We've got a juicy dragon's fire with a couple dragons to reveal if needed. And the arrow curve is shaping up nicely. Opponent's black green with a Valky. Sure. They can see my hand anyway, so we'll go for some overkill. So no three mana play. Another Valky. Probably snipes the adult gold dragon. Nope, goes for the inferno. Well, we've got our next couple turns lined up. <sighs> it's a shame we must fight on such a try to find the good in your heart. Binding takes out our Planeswalker. Alright, so double adult gold dragon will have to get the job done. Opponent can eventually turn Valky into a 6 6, but should be able to find removal in the meantime. Trogrid's Lantern we don't really care about since we can easily offset the life loss. Warhounds gets a land but it's tapped. So we'll probably still go for another dragon. And yeah, next turn they can turn Valky into a 6-6 six -six Inferno. Which will kind of stop us in our tracks a little bit. And then I should still be fine playing my land and potentially getting value off the Warhound. Alright, so Valky turns into Inferno. But they're gonna have to play defense with it. Dragon's Fire deals 4 damage, so we could trade an Adult Gold Dragon and a Dragon's Fire to take out Inferno, which seems worth it. And we get back for Inferno as well. And next turn we can play it with Hastes. So let's see if they find an answer. They need both one for the Adult Gold Dragon and the Inferno. We've got some life to spare. So yeah, it's Inferno time. Keep as much red man untapped as possible. Soul Shatter deals with Inferno. And Soul Shatter number two. Alright, so they actually did it. So we're top decking. Still have a lot of life to spare for the Lantern at least. The Dryad holds off for Warhound. And. Lantern's not a bad mana sink. Get 
can discard a land. No reason to trade since we could always stop deck sparring regimen. Yeah, double soul shatter. Very effective. Dryads feels comfortable attacking. And we can play Luca, which can reanimate one of our dragons. And uh, don't know if it matters between the Inferno and the Adult Gold Dragon, but go with the Adults. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with the fine hands. Turn two Dragon's Fire. Turn three Mila. Into Grandmaster. With Mila also increasing its loyalty. Opponent on maybe a red black sacrifice deck. Double Shambling Ghast. Keep up Dragon's Fire. Probably fine taking two. Maybe under Fern. We can take action. Alright, Magda is probably worth killing. So technically if I block they won't be able to finish off Mila with just a Shambling Ghast. So yeah, I'll block. Sudden Breakthrough, alright, that was unexpected. Can still play Grandmaster and then could shut down one of the Shambling Ghasts or we could get a Monk of the Open Hand. Be a god in disguise. I guess we'll get a monk and then maybe next turn I can go double monk plus a removal spell. I am proud of all my followers. Goldspan Dragon. It's gonna take out our first Grandmaster. So we would love to draw one of our dragons to enable the dragon's fire. For now, let's see. Grandmaster can shut down Goldspan, but I also need to deal with the Berserker before it makes any dragons, so I think the play is going to be either two removal spells on Goldspan, but I think Berserker is probably the priority for now. So we'll play double monk of the open hand and then maybe rip apart to keep the instant speed dragon's fire for later don't know if the point has any artifacts or enchantments we care about and then I'm fine trading for one of the shambling guests I see Minion of the Mighty. Sadly, we had to draw the Snarl, which comes into play tapped, so I can't double spell. But uh, still fine to Grandmaster. And then plus on the Goldspan. The Minion does have Menace. Better point stop decking, so the ability shouldn't be too scary. Opponent passes, and now we can even turn on the cave. Gotta keep plussing on the gold span though. Try to find the good in your heart. Shambling 
Shambling gas attacks. Just gonna block it with a dragon. So we don't lose our monk. Alright, so we're getting close to 7 loyalty here. Two removal spells in hand, so... Let's talk. Feeling pretty good about this. Could also kill the gold span with our two burn spells. But we'll kill a berserker instead. Could wait until my turn to maybe trigger the monk. Yeah, that's reasonable. So, gold span shut down. We have a 7 7. And uh, could play Mila, could wait to play Luca as well. Or I guess we could do both. Trigger Monk. And we'll work our way up towards an ultimate here. And uh, I guess the Monk can attack. Keep Grandmaster on defense for now case of any additional gold spans over the top. And now Dragon's Fire deals 7 damage since we control a 7 power dragon. Alright, Inferno of the Star Mounts. Pretty strong here with all those treasure tokens that they can sink into it. But our indestructible Grandmaster of Flowers will be able to stop it, and next turn Dragon's Fire can take it out. Opponent learning how Grandmaster works. And uh, now I think I'm gonna search for a monk. So we can draw two with Luca, Dragon's Fire, answer for Goldspan, still have an adult gold dragon, and yeah, this game's over. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and this hand's acceptable. The land is good. Got our Dragon's Fire available. Going on black white. Foretells a card. Can play regimen. And what do I want to get? We've got our next couple turns lined up with our four drops. So we gotta think long term. Might want to get introduction as just a versatile card draw effect. Apparition exiles the regiment. Yeah, don't mind getting the Grandmaster out there. Could also go for Icing Death first. As a threat that can play defense as well. Gets exiled. So that's one fewer answer for the Grandmaster. By exiling it, we don't get the equipment token. Alright. So now probably good time for Grandmaster. Don't have triple white, so can't play the Monk if I search it up. So probably just plus on Apparition, although we don't get any value from the Master that way. If they can remove it. Could play Mila first, although might want to wait for Luca to combine with the Grandmaster. So there's something to be said for introduction plus maybe Dragon's Fire this turn. And then next turn I can have a more mana efficient turn as well. Frostbite's good. I'll keep that. And 
and we'll keep Rip apart for potential artifacts or enchantments that show up. I can take two to see if there's a scarier threat we need to Dragon's Fire instead. Valkyrie has four toughness. Currently survives our removal. So Dragon's Fire could kill the Valkyrie later if we top deck a dragon. But it is more mana efficient to use the Dragon's Fire and keep the Frostbites. There's a chance the opponent blocks the 3 3. And we can finish it off. And if not, we'll Grandmaster. And probably still plus on the Valkyrie. And if we can untap and maybe combo Luka with our Grandmaster, we'll be happy. Valkyrie up to 21. So I'm starting to think that this Exiled card might be a Starnheim Unleashed. Okay. So the problem with... Going for Luka here is that we expose our Planeswalkers a little bit to double Valkyrie, so I probably need to take one of them out. And then still have a couple options. I could play Mila. Or I could hang on to it to maybe get Luka. And then I might want to keep land in hand to discard to Luka's ability. Hive of the Eye Tyrant, another way to pressure our Planeswalker. And yeah, there's the Sternheim Unleashed, like we were suspecting. Grandmaster might not be able to ultimate, but what we can do is plus, and then... These have Vigilance, so can't target them. But by playing Mila, we can make it so the Grandmaster turns into a 7-7 before taking damage. So that might save it. So we'll see if the opponent falls into our trap. Retribution. Gains more life. And let's see if we get a juicy ambush here, thanks to Mila. We do. And then now, let's see here, five, six. So I can play Warhound to ramp. And then I can shut down an attack from the Valkyrie, or I can get a Monk. And we'll shut down the Valkyrie. And this probably needs to play defense. Rampage. Yeah, that can make me sacrifice creatures, so that's one way to kill my Grandmaster. So I can't really block anymore, otherwise I'll lose a Grandmaster. And next turn, Double Strike is threatening lethal. So not sure how to get out of this, but at least we get to see a cool Mila interaction with the Grandmaster here. And land certainly not gonna do it. Uh, 
Let's learn some humility. Angels get double strike. Yeah, if it weren't for the rampage of the Valkyries, we might have been okay. Another retribution. So, not sure what the opponent's afraid of here. Alright, good game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Maybe get our valley from the Warhounds to ramp into our Gold Dragon a turn sooner. Opponent on a green white life gain deck with turn to Innkeeper. And a Cleric class, sure. Yeah, I'll wait on the Warhound and just play it next turn. And we'll be able to keep up Frostbite as well. So one of the perks of being on the draw. Next turn can already play our Dragon. Orator resolves. And... I think I'm fine with the trade. And then we can punish the pump spell. And it's dragon time. Got a lot of options next turn between another dragon, playing our planeswalker. And then Luca, which can also combine with our Master of Flowers. A lifelinking Moon Dancer is kind of scary. So might want to shut that down with our Grandmaster. Opponent levels up their cleric class, plays an author. And now I'm kind of liking getting a monk, discarding it with Luca to get our value, but opponents decide that they've seen enough. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a very nice hand. A regimen plus adult gold dragons, pretty sweet. And I'll just play the Warhound on turn 2. Don't get any value, but it gives us a creature to start growing with the Regimen. Opponent Black-White. And what do I want to get? Could go Sciences, could go Introduction. Let's go with uh, Sciences. Okay, maybe double spell with a rip apart next turn. As we see a Blight Priest. Okay, so we'll science this, get Mountain. Keep on growing the Warhounds. And then we can play a 5 drop, play a 6 drop. Kangalay Firefans. Potentially scary. In this case, I'll attack with a dragon and put the counter on the Warhound so we can still avoid trading. Opponent falls to one. And we'll see how they get out of this. All of the Skyclaves is a start. 
And a rune of sustenance for lifelink on the equipment. But they have to stay back and Inferno of the Star Mounts is pretty effective here. So is there any way I've guaranteed lethal either way? If I play Inferno and attack with everyone, let's say they block a 5 power dragon, gain 5 up to 6, they're still super dead. Alright, sweet. That was a quickie. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And our hands, good if we can find white mana. Yeah. I've got a lot of white sources in the deck. Sentinel, we will take out. There is something to be said for not playing my land so we can get our value from the Warhound. Can maybe do so next turn. Avenger, Serpent on Black Green Elves. Avenger is worth taking out since whatever else we kill is going to provide a ton of value for them otherwise. And then how much do we care about getting an extra land with a Warhound? Regiments more mana efficient but we won't have a creature in play to leverage the plus one counter. So I think Warhound still makes sense. Realm Walker is also worth taking out. Although I'm sure that if we just play a Regimen, they're not gonna trade. Which is maybe worthwhile. And then next turn we can rip apart the Realm Walker. What do I learn for is a question. I'm liking either Prophecy or... Reduce seems a little drastic at this stage in the game. Yeah, let's get a Prophecy. So I can play both Rip Apart and Prophecy next turn. Opponent does take the trade. A little bit surprised by that, but... They might have more sources of card advantage in hand. Another Sentinel. And another Realm Walker that explains it. Alright, I think we just go for the Dragon here. Sentinel does have reach, but probably not gonna chump block just yet. Yeah, Regiment plus Gold Dragon is quite a combo, and it's even powerful enough to make the opponent explode. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We've got a Warhound, which can ramp into an adult Gold Dragon, so I'm down. Double Warhound even, so I might be able to play one on turn two, depending on what the opponent does. Tells a card. Yeah, I'll play Warhound. Maybe should have uh, kept the mountain, played the pathway in case we draw the second Snarl, although there's only one left in the deck. Starnheim Aspirants, or point another Black White Angels deck. Okay, can play Warhound, get our planes. Offer the trade and then still potentially frostbite. So I've got a bit of pressure now. Can play the Grandmaster or Dragon with a land. Dragon's Fire dealing 4 damage, thanks to the adult gold dragon, also relevant. In case we see any 4 4 angels or Valkyries. Another Aspirants. How much do we care about the mana discount? Now that they have four lands in play, it's probably not super relevant. So I can attack for six, play Grandmaster. Still fine with the trade, of course, so I'm not gonna plus on Aspirant first. And 
I guess I might as well search up a monk if we're not gonna prevent anything from attacking. If they play a land, the next Warhound is turned on. So this most likely is Starnheim Unleashed, which can now make two 4 4 Angels. I'm gonna play one mana Righteous Valkyrie first. Which we can Dragon's Fire to deal for. So now Starnheim Unleashed can only make one Angel at most. So it's gonna be a Cosmos Elixir instead. Alrighty, so we want to kill the Valkyrie, ramp with the Warhound. And what does the Master of Flowers do? I guess now we prevent the Aspirin from attacking. Or blocking. Opponent can make two 4-4 four, four Angels. They do have Vigilance, so we can plus with the Grandmaster. Bone goes to 9. Sparring Regiment's useful. So... What's my play here? If I were to plus on Aspirants... Okay, maybe Regimen and Frostbites. Sure. And then play a Monk first. And I can get an answer for the Cosmos Elixir with a start from scratch, perhaps. And attack. Alright, and we'll finish off one of the Angels. Maybe should not have attacked with all three Warhounds, but just two. Fracture kills my Planeswalker. That's acceptable. He was probably not going to ultimate with the Angel in play. Rally the ranks, name's Angel. So I don't have to kill the Elixir immediately, since it's not drawing the opponent any extra cards. So instead we'll go Monk plus Dragon. And Dragon kind of forces a trade for the Angel. Or I can instead just attack with Warhound on the ground. Could have also used start from scratch to deal one to the angel to maybe finish it off somehow. Put on traits. Alright, that's good for me. Now the skies might be clear for the adult gold dragon. Although they still have that great hall. Io Vecna to draw more cards. Opponents down to five, goes up to seven. Grandmaster can prevent the Valkyrie from blocking. And then, even if they jump, they would be taking seven. So their debts, according to my math. Strive for good. Dispense. I shall not let you harm others. All right, sweet. So yeah, we got to see the deck in action. Even got to see the. Grandmaster turning to a dragon a few times, and then our Grandmaster synergizes with both halves of Mila, which can add loyalty, or Luka, which can help us discard those monks for value. So besides just having cards that are individually powerful, there's also quite a bit of synergy throughout the deck. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.